just brace yourself because it's pretty bad. Sam's bedroom wow. is now out of bounds. I'm concerned about my health because when it was already a small problem, I, you know, went to the GP and, you know, sure enough, there were levels of mold in my blood at that point. And this was a few months ago before it was this bad. How long has this been like this? I've been living with the mold problem since May. I would say that it excelled pretty rapidly. I mean, there's fuzz and these, uh, you know, starfish looking things I've never seen before. I, didn't, I, I don't know, you know, what's what. So it's just, it's pretty astonishing to see how rapidly this has deteriorated. The whole carpet is flooded. As a private tenant, Sam has been paying £1,100 a month in rent. Yeah. We can see the mould and the damp, but you really smell it, can't you? It really kind of gets in your throat as well. It's pungent. I mean, if I have to come in here even for a couple of seconds, I'm usually covering my face with something just because it's so bad. And it's a one bedroom flat and you have not been sleeping in this bedroom? No, you know, I've kind of turned my living room into a bedroom. It's grown up underneath the bed. Many of his possessions are now ruined. All of this is going to need to be replaced because so all oh, that's a write off the TV. Yeah. Television, I've got photos and books in there that are irreplaceable that have now been saturated in water. And I just try to avoid coming in here at all costs. And today I woke up to this. But many of Sam's neighbors have damp problems. King Min Lam has a hole in his ceiling where water comes through every time it rains. This is quite a serious problem. Like, you know, I can't, if I, can't visit my parents or something. Yeah, every time it rains, basically. Yeah, I've been stressed, like, you know, because that is not enough. That's just temporary. But people living in these flats are not alone. New figures show that 80,000 social housing homes in England have similar mould and damp problems. And mould is a killer. Two-year-old Awab Ishak lost his life from a severe respiratory condition after living too close to high levels of mould. I don't think the government has taken any interest in the quality of housing stock until the most recent case that hit the headlines. Um, certainly, I, I wouldn't have confidence that if I went to government at the moment about Queen's House, that I would get, I would see government uh, respond and act. Um, and that's a, that's a concern. I think they have to take this a lot more seriously than they have done up to now. In a statement, Queen's House landlord told us when it came to our attention that our previous managing agent was not looking after the block, we immediately took action. Whilst months of neglect cannot be rectified overnight, our new agents are well on the way to having this block brought up to a suitable standard. But Sam's had enough. He's now stopped paying rent until the damp problem is sorted. Well, Rags, this paints a really bleak picture, doesn't it? That's right. We've just focused on Sam, who's a private tenant. Worth reminding uh, the viewers, he's paying £1,100 a month, or at least until today. But today's report by the regulator looked at social housing, and that's a really bad picture. They estimate that up to 80,000 homes have serious damp and mould problems, and 8,000 are deemed extremely critical. But they say the private sector is probably in a worse condition and less re regulated. The government, meanwhile, say they're bringing in their social housing regulation bill soon.